Hey guys, so I am delighted to be kicking this vlog off by saying that a couple of days ago on Sunday night, for me it was like one in the morning actually, the wonderful Jessie posted the results for the Booktube Recognition Awards and I won I won an award. So I won the Foreign Fatale Award, so like the best non-American booktuber, which is fucking insane because I was up against Piera and Piera is like one of my icons, like Piera is one of my favourite booktubers and she has like so many thousands more subscribers than me. So I was just like, I was taken aback. I was taken aback and I was just, I was shook. So I just wanted to say thank you to Jessie for putting all the work into these awards, for gathering all the data, for trying to make it as fair as possible, for thinking of ways to make it bigger and better and more fair next year. And honestly, like Jessie, if you're watching this, the work that you put in is incredible and you deserve all the praise that you are getting for this. And then I also want to thank every single person who voted for me because I was like taken aback and blown away. So thank you guys so much. Like I appreciate all of you. Booktube got me through a really rough time and just the love and the support from the community was really helpful to me then and it's still really helpful to me now so I just wanted to thank you all. So now we've got the soppy portion of the vlog over. I finished the puppy wall today. Pretty much at the end of last week's vlog I filled you in on an updated plot of this. It's a grimdark fantasy. It follows the Second Sino-Japanese War and it features the Rape of Nanking which was a big massacre that happened sometime during World War II. I'm not sure like the exact year. And you guys know <laughs> there were a few things I didn't love. Some of it was personal preference. The writing style is very much like a young adult fantasy. It's not as dense or complex as I like from adult fantasy. The magic system I don't think I mentioned in last week's vlog is um, it's shamanism. Essentially people ingest drugs to commune with the gods and harness their powers and that's how the magic system works in this book which I mean it was okay but I didn't feel like it had a strict enough rules for me. Like the system was a bit like I don't know like I, I don't have like a full grasp of it because eventually the characters who have these powers go mad. I just didn't feel like it had enough boundaries and parameters and concrete rules for me to absolutely love it. Something that I haven't held against the book, it's not the quality of the book's fault but the editing in this is fucking appalling. Like some of the sentences are just they're, they're nonsensical and I can pick them out. I picked out at least 10 sentences that were just completely not edited to make sense. There's a sentence I think towards the end in the last chapter or so I read a sentence that says something like worry do not worry because the first worry should have been taken out and it just wasn't and there's several instances of that. So like I'm not going to mark the book down in like star ratings for that, it's just something that's really irritating for such a hyped 2018 release by Harper Voyager to be so badly edited. The only other critique I really have for this is that I didn't really feel too attached to the characters. I found the story extremely compelling. The writing is very accessible, like I said, not to my particular taste, but it's very easy to read and very accessible for those of you who aren't as comfortable reading high fantasy and adult fantasy. You'll have no problem with the writing style in this. If anything, it'll be like the topics that you struggle with. But I just did not feel connected to any of the characters. I mean, there's this is set in like a really brutal war, really brutal events. Lots of people die and I just didn't care. While I was very compelled by the story and I really enjoyed the actual storyline of the book, was really interested in any everything that was happening. A lot of people have said they prefer the first half to the second half of the book, but I don't think I preferred either. It was all good. I enjoyed reading it all. Cass from I think, is it Read With Cass? Said that she felt that the ending dragged a bit. I didn't feel like it did. But I just didn't really care about any of the characters. The story, like the plot and the pacing of this I thought was amazing. But the writing style is not to my particular taste. The characters don't seem to be... There's nothing to stop these characters from moving into another fantasy book and just like live in there. Because there was nothing about their dialogue that was really rooted in this world. I think my problem with this is the world building was good. But if I really deep dived into it, I could pick apart a lot of plot holes. I don't really know what the landscape of this country looks like. And a big thing for me with fantasy is atmosphere. And I feel like this lacked atmosphere. And I think that is my main problem with it. 
there were very little descriptions of places and because the characters were so transferable in dialogue to any time period and any setting I struggled imagining them in a place and the lack of the descriptions of settings meant that I wasn't building any mental images they were kind of just floating around in a white void in my mind so I will say that there was a big disconnect with the characters but all that being said that was like a really long ramble that I might have to cut some out of in editing I gave this four stars I haven't decided if I'm using half stars yet but it would possibly be like a 3.5 I thought it was very good I think the storyline has a lot of potential I think the author has a lot of potential but some things weren't to my taste and some things I didn't love. So, I've said it before, I will say it again. I have decided that I am going to be reading in roll order for Bookopoly. So I've read two Bookopoly books so far. I'm up to number three. So this is like the halfway point. And I will be reading Hero at the Fall by Alwyn Hamilton. And this was for, I think I landed on young adult fantasy and this is the book that I picked. So this is the third book in the Rebel of the Sands trilogy. It follows a girl called Amani who is from a dusty desert town and she's I think she's about to be married to her uncle and she really doesn't want that so she runs away with a foreigner however the foreigner is embroiled in a plot of intense politics. <laughs> He's part of a rebellion and there's also Genie. So I really liked the the first book was okay I read it at a really difficult not a difficult part in my life but my head was all over the place so I gave it four stars to give it the benefit of the doubt the second book felt like the first half was really rushed because the author had changed the direction she was going in and needed to bridge the gap between where the story left off at the end of the first book and where it was going in the second book but like the second half of the second book was phenomenal so I'm really excited to see what happens with this one. This is the last book on my TBR over 500 pages. I'm hoping that I can read this in a week like I read The Poppy War in a week and then I have plenty of time to read the other books on my TBR which are much shorter. So that is all I have for now. I have quite a busy evening ahead of me. It is my boyfriend's birthday tomorrow. We're going out for a meal so I have to wrap his gifts write his card and I also have to edit my video for Thursday because I don't want to be editing it on his birthday it's like quite a long one it's going to take me a while so I'm going to go do all that and then I'm going to be starting here at the fall and I'll check in with you later at doing that last week but I am on page 332 of Hero at the Fall by Alwyn Hamilton. So I can't really tell you what this is about with it being the last book in the Rebel of the Sands trilogy but I am really really enjoying it. There are things that I like more than others like these books they're really really good but they'll never be like one of my favourite series ever. I would five star this but it's not going to be like the best thing I have ever read. There are things that I really do like about it like every so often in all of the books in the series there is a very short chapter they're normally like two to three pages max and they're told in a style of a fairy tale or a myth or a legend almost as though you are reading this as a first person account as it is happening but you have these little sections that are the stories that are told about them afterwards so for example chapter two in this is called the deathless sultima and the first sort of couple of lines is 
once there was a desert under siege and a sultan without an heir to defend it and it's kind of like in that legend fairy tale style and I really really love those chapters it's kind of like what I said about when I was reading Kingdom of Ash and I said I really like the sections where it zooms out and it's like a bird's eye perspective of what's going on instead of following any given character I don't know what it is about that kind of storytelling I really love it when it's juxtaposed with like normal well what we come to realize as the normal way of storytelling in the 21st century so I really enjoy that a couple of things that I don't like about this series and the reason that it won't ever be my favorite although I still think it's like amazing the first one is that the pacing is too fast I do know that I have had a problem with this before but I did listen to somebody reviewing maybe the second book and they said that they thought the pacing was like a little bit slow in some parts but everything it's just one thing after another after another after another and instead of taking time to really build feeling within the reader and make you think that something real bad's gonna happen each conflict happens across two to three chapters and then it is sort of salt resolved or sometimes something bad does happen and then you have like one chapter of calm and then another like three chapter section of something really intense happening and it's just a little bit too fast paced and i do feel like it it hinders the connection that you can have with the story because you're moving so fast that you're not really taking the time it's just like one dramatic like life-threatening thing after another what that does mean though is that i am reading this incredibly quickly like i said i'm on page 332 and i didn't actually start this on tuesday because i got distracted talking to rachel but i started this on wednesday and it's now friday so it hasn't even been three days and i've read 330 pages the other thing that i don't really like about it, it feeds into sort of that kind of thing that i just complained about and it's that every the end of every chapter is like super dramatic and you know the kind of ones that i mean for example all i had to do was kill a prince or we raised our hands in surrender so that kind of like super dramatic chapter ending and it's like it's not every single one but it is the majority of them and so any sort of suspense that ending chapters like that creates disappears because it's just overdone aside from that i really really love this story i like that it's action-packed which is like different for me i like slow burns i like really long really dense things but this is like super accessible writing style super fast paced and it's great i love it it will never be one of my favorite things ever but i still really love this series and i would recommend similar with asian fantasies i really love the atmosphere in this i can't say that i love desert fantasy because this is the only one i have read so far but i have been waiting to wrap up this trilogy because i have city of brass that i really want to read and i also have mirage now as well by samaya dowd and i do probably i've got like ember in the ashes which isn't like quite a desert fantasy but it is based in a culture i'm unfamiliar with so i am excited to wrap this up so that i can explore more desert fantasy sometime soon i think that's pretty much all i have for this update i may finish this tonight i may possibly finish it tomorrow and if i don't i will definitely have it finished by sunday not sure what my plan for tomorrow is yet because we were thinking about maybe going out but next week i'm going to three cities in four days so it's gonna be kind of busy we'll see what i'm gonna do but i probably my next update will be when i finish this last night that i may finish this book and i was all like oh i may finish this tonight i was 100 joking however did i finish here at the fall last night yes i did so yesterday in total i read like 300 pages which is unheard of for me the last time i did that was summer not even last year summer 2017 when i read turtles all the way down in like one day 
but that's the last time I read that many pages at once. So I don't have much more to say about this than I said yesterday, but I did really love the ending of this and the ending of this series. I just, oh, it was just so good, you know? And I, I really like the romance in this. And for those of you that don't like romance in fantasy, it is very much a subplot. There is none of this, like, the plot becomes about this person and, like, the love interest gets kidnapped and we must save them. Or in the end, like, fuck your original purpose. It's all about doing stuff for the love interest. That does not happen. It's very much a subplot. And I love it. Something else I also realised about this series last night that I hadn't really thought about before is that you don't follow the chosen one in this book. Amani is not the chosen one. She is a side character working in the rebellion and she is one of the people who has to protect the chosen one. So I did really like that about it and it's also <laughs> tied into like the romance aspect. I liked how her purpose and the rebellion is more important to her than what she wants and the love interest and I just I really liked that about it you know so I did give this five stars maybe like a 4.5 like I said not like a 100% favorite but I do really love this and I think that it wrapped up really really well so that means on the is it the 18th of January today I'm on to my fourth bookopoly role and my fourth role was to read a book outside of my comfort zone and I picked Goyo by Junji Ito I'm on page 179 already and there are three 400 pages 400 pages like 390 ish so i'm like about halfway in this <laughs> this is a horror story that is it's a manga so it's set in japan and it is about this couple who are on an island and then all of a sudden a fish comes out of the sea that has legs and they're like well this is very strange and then more and more fish start to come out of the sea with legs and sharks and chaos ensues <laughs> this is by one of the supposedly because i don't this is the first manga i've ever read this is by supposedly like the best horror manga writer and is it scary not really because it's about fish with legs <laughs> but i i appreciate the aspects of horror in here and there's some things that i do recognize it's like it's like a tacky horror you know like um sharknado and dinosaurs versus cowboys and i think there's a film out recently about a giant shark called like the meg it's like that kind of thing it does have some creepy art it builds suspense in some ways i think there's going to be like a really creepy disgusting plot twist coming up soon but it's very much in the japanese style of horror very like twisted like the the things i'm finding out about why the fish have legs it's a little bit grim <laughs> So I'm enjoying this so far. As for what I think about manga so far, I enjoy it. Something that like I, I don't love is that there's a lot of pages on here that just have sound effects. <laughs> like there's lots of pages that just say like 10 times. And I'm like, well, that's great. But like what, what is making this noise? And it's only when you get later on and you find out like how the fish are moving around, like you kind of know what's making that noise. But when I was first reading it, I was like, well, great, this is just pages and pages of <laughs> But for like a manga, and I've never read manga before, I am enjoying the format. The story's all right. I'm, it's a horror and it's not scary, but it's, it's good. I'm enjoying it. When I went out today, I did not intend to buy any books because I don't need any books. And I've... I'm not on a buying ban because saying that I'm not like forcing myself not to buy books is just not never going to be a thing but you guys know I buy a lot of my books from charity shops so if I go into a charity shop and I see a book for a pen that I want to read I'm not going to say no so what I am doing is I'm avoiding charity shops and it's got to the point now like I've never really gone in for the hype with things but at the minute I'm just like not listening to what anybody else is buying like I am for the plots and like adding them to my Goodreads TBR but I've never been one to go out and buy something full price anyway I have plenty of books on my TBR to read. I don't need to go buy a book because somebody said it's good. If I come across it in a charity shop, yes, I will buy it. If I somehow run out of books I really want to read, yes, I will buy it. If I'm participating in a readathon and it's a group book, yes, I will buy it. But I'm not just going to go out and buy books like for no reason, essentially. But I did get this one. And um, one thing that the, pretty much the only things I really want to be buying this year are continuations in series I've already started 
and new releases that are on my anticipated reads list which I think will have just gone up when this vlog goes up. So I did pick up a book, paid full price at Waterstones but I did use my gift voucher and that is Evermore by Sarah Holland but it's okay because this is a sequel to a book that I read last year. I read Everless by Sarah Holland last year. This is like a European style fantasy that follows a girl who lives in a world where you use blood as currency kind of like the movie in time apart from it's actually instructed, extracted from your veins and physically turned into money and I read the first book it didn't blow me away but it was good and it definitely had potential so I was interested in at least picking up the second book to see how the story develops and if it's better because like the first book wasn't bad it was just kind of average you know so I'm hoping to get to this sometime soon I'm not going to reread Everless because I do normally reread series however I did do a book diary for Everless so I'm gonna watch that and I think I remember a lot of the key plot points in that which is strange because I don't normally it must have been because I was talking about it in a book diary so I got this and I'm hoping to read it soon maybe if I get through all my bookopoly stuff then I will because honestly I don't have a lot left and I have a week and a half of the month left. But my camera battery is flashing at me and I need to go listen to a record because I'm going to a show next week. I'm going to see the 1975 and I haven't listened to their album on vinyl yet. I've listened to it hundreds of times on Spotify but I have the vinyl so I'm going to go listen to that and input some stuff into my book spreadsheet and I'll check in with you guys tomorrow. Hey guys it's around 10pm <clears throat> on Sunday evening and I look like a crazy person in my uh reading poncho with this very scruffy bun on top of my head but I've had a bit of a lazy Sunday. Been chill even though I've done like two loads of laundry, made a bunch of candles, like it's been a real a real chill day. But I need to wrap this vlog up now because it's almost not this week because that makes sense. And I finished yet more books. So Gyo, Gyo, I think it's pronounced like Gyo. I finished this last night I gave it four stars. I think yesterday I was saying that it isn't scary and it takes a turn and becomes very disturbing. So it is a little bit scary, it is a little bit creepy. I think that this has a lot to say about the environment and man's interference with the environment and the repercussions of that. I feel like that's the theme with this. My first experience with manga was good. I enjoyed it. I really liked the format. The ending was speculative, but I didn't mind. Like, I was really satisfied, even though a lot of things just weren't wrapped up. I didn't find it hard to follow, but there wasn't as much dialogue as I'm used to seeing in graphic novels, so I didn't enjoy that as much. I think I like manga graphic novels with a little bit more dialogue because I'm just not a visual person, you know? Like, I've said this before, before I started reading a lot of graphic novels, and I didn't really like them. I always thought it was because I'm not a very visual person. Like, I can't read diagrams to save my life. I like things written down. If there's, like, pages with not a lot of dialogue on them in graphic novels, then I do tend to get a little bit confused when I'm trying to follow, like, the storyline. But I did enjoy it. I gave it four stars because I didn't read it and think this was the best thing ever. But I've never read another manga, so I can't compare it to other mangas and yeah I had just no experience with the format so I give it four stars because I, I didn't dislike it. I, I enjoyed it but it wasn't like the best thing ever. <laughs> so then I had to read the book for my fifth and final Bookopoly role and that was to read my most recent purchase which was Isola Volume 1 by Brendan Fletcher and Carl Keschel? Kershel? Carl Kershel. This is a new graphic novel series. This is the first volume that was released last year last year last year <laughs> which brings me on to the next book that i'm going to be reading so this was bound up in i believe october this is a exclusive cover to my comic book store so if you've seen this out and about it probably won't have this cover this is a fantasy graphic novel series that follows this kid here who may not be a kid he's the captain of the guard and he is trying to get his queen somewhere because she has had a curse placed upon her. Now, what I want to say about this is that the art is absolutely stunning. This is another one that I gave four stars, but it would probably be a 3.5 if I was being like real precise because there was a pit, where's that beautiful, beautiful page? I'll just flick through a couple for you. So you have like, the glowy pages are the most beautiful. So like these ones that are like colour washed. 
are just stunning. There's also a lot in this storyline to do with spirits and animal spirits. The problem I had with this is that again, just pages without any dialogue or you have dialogue in this language. Whatever this may be. So you can't read it anyway. Um, there's also bits that are told in flashback, but it's panel by panel. So for example, this page, these are happening in different timelines. But it's hard to tell what exactly is happening. And there'll be bits where like one page is happening in one timeline and it seems that one page is happening in another timeline, but it's not very explicit. So the storyline was hard to follow. I read this, I have no idea what I read, but I like the style of it. And I like the flashbacks and how the different colours in the art like tell you which time period you're in. I just couldn't really, I, I just didn't get a grasp of what was actually going on. And when I got to the end it seemed like not really a lot had happened and I wasn't any the wiser. I am going to continue with this when the next one comes out because I'm very intrigued. I absolutely love the animal spirits. That's why I picked it up because of the glowy tiger and I absolutely adore the art. This art is beautiful. So I will continue with this and I hope everything clears up a little bit in the second volume, but I'll have to wait until October this year, obviously. So that means that I have completed my very first Bookopoly challenge, which is exciting because I was worried for a while there that I wouldn't make it through. So next on my TBR is Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. This is for Ryan's Harry Potter read along. We are reading the first two books in January because they are a lot shorter than the rest of the books in the series. So I expect to have this done in a few days. I'm hoping to have it done before Wednesday. Oh my god, that gives me like two days. <laughs> so yeah, two days and maybe a little bit tonight spent on this, hoping to get that done. And then we'll see what I'm moving on to because I have a few options. So that has been my my weekly vlog i finished four books this week so yeah that's a lot and i don't even feel like i've dedicated a lot of time to reading i just have managed to read a lot i know the last two like one was a manga but it's had 400 pages and the graphic novel obviously is quite short and easy to read but i finished a 500 plus page book this week and i read an entire 500 plus page book this week so i've done pretty well so i'm gonna head off please let me know if you read any of the books that i have this week and please don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you want to i'll catch you guys next week bye oh you bite your friend like chocolate you say you will go when nobody knows with guns in under our petticoats we're never gonna quit it no we're never gonna quit it no